All right, welcome back to the late morning session, I guess. Our first speaker is Sadat Kowal, with lots of donations from me to Dubai. And uh, he will talk about present degree in the workout. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank, um, thank you, organizers, uh, for this opportunity. I'm very happy to be here today. And um, so the whole object of the talk today is to be it started out as a way to compute very characteristics. Yeah, this might sound strange, uh, but um, just I think I can try to explain that there are many quick ways to do that uh, using a suitable uh, formalism and also explain certain other phenomena. So, this is the plan. I'll start the first part is explaining some kind of a construction. And, Theory and then the applications. And I want to get to the applications uh, eventually. So, the most basic invariant is probably the other characteristic. And a triangulation, when you compute the other characteristic on triangulation, that's a stratification. So, there's no union of spaces. But when you want to compute this key, uh, you cannot take uh, naively key of x as the sum of the key of x. Uh, it, would have, it would be wonderful. So basically, this is what I want to do eventually. Okay, so this uh, this issue is resolved if you work with other characteristic with compact forms. So what is that? Um, the homology of the compact reports is divided, as is shown, uh, with the theorem of compact set exhausting your space. Uh, it's a very beautiful construction, and for finite type. Spaces you can take the alternating sum, and that's the other characteristic with compact reports. Sometimes it coincides with k of x, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it does, of course, when uh, spaces are compact. And this other characteristic is called combinatorial sometimes because it has a beautiful additivity. So I want to introduce a topological property which I'll be using all over the place. And uh, has become so essential that I never expected it to be this essential local compactness. So, space, so we're working in our end, so everything is nice and house uh, So, locally compact or locally closed are the same things. And uh, the space is locally compact if it's open is closed. We'll write LC in this block. Here's a space that's not locally compact. So it's uh, it's this triangle together with two points. So that 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 messes up messes up various things. So if X is compact, this cohomology of compact support is the same as the cohomology we use. And the key uh, the, the key C is the key we use also. Otherwise, if if you're in a locally compact house block, uh, one way to compute is to take the cohomology of one point compact. Is the distance you make modulo the point at infinity? Just if you wonder how you want to compute this. Point. Okay, so certifications are decomposition of a space into Zontarian spaces, and for me, all the subspaces uh, in the decomposition are going to be. Uh, depending on, on which field you're in, uh, you might add, add some more to certification, like frontier conditions or things like that. All, all I want is is, uh, is a disjoint union of local compact or local process. And the additivity theorem for other characteristic with compact supports is the one I have on the board, which tells you that if you split the space into, if the space that you start with the local compact, so if you start with the local compact space, which is itself has tried to decompose into disjoint union of x size, 
for all the exercise I'd love to help out. Then the very kind of will come back to what is added. Okay, so right now, I mean, this is basically the motivation. Uh, you, you make the link between this that uh, shows up on the later and key. So you can use in certification to compute the PC and then relate it to key. So it's very useful to compute a few years ago uh, some um, very characteristic of spaces called body centers related to nonlinear analysis. And that was actually the start of this work. So the ease of this beautiful characteristic. Now comes something that I was not aware of, shocking. Um, so if X is not SC, is the highly given the theorem structure? Obviously, the answer is going to be no. Otherwise, you know, there are no objectives to the talk. Um, so the answer is no, and one should be a little careful. So look at the space I have, all right, which is this triangle with these two points. That is a full, it's a full triangle, and you you remove this. Uh, right. So so the part of the boundary that is in the complement is not closed. To be locally compact. The part of the boundary that is in the complement should be closed. That's not the case. And this space is stratified in a nice way. You have these two points. Then you have the full triangle minus the edge. The full triangle is closed. The edge is closed. Two points are closed. So all the spaces are not compact. And then you compute the sum. And the sum here, and you find that it's two. And what are we saying? Um, but if you compute that very characteristic of the space with compact support with the, the formula, uh, you get zero. So they're not the same. Okay, so at that point, we wonder about something. So start with the space that is stratifiable. So it's a disjoint union of locally compact subset. And look at this, look at this quantity, which is a sum. What is that? Okay, it, it would be an earlier characteristic with compact support if the space is locally compact. But for general spaces, where is it? Does it depend on the structure of uh, Yes, exactly. Uh, so uh, we're, we're, we're getting exactly to that. So definitely we're on a construction that doesn't depend on that, that's, that's exactly. So uh, it, it, this, this thing behaves like an algebra. So uh, if you take, as an algebra homomorphism, so if you take um, um, union of spaces, which are themselves as right? So you get a stratification of the joint union, and then you see that if you take this formula, provide as well, right? This in that, and it also works well for a part. So you, uh, so it it is giving you some sort of an algebra morphism, but where from? All right. So we need to construct a suitable ring, a stratifiable subspace of the two space, so that this becomes a well-defined non-trivial ring morphism. Okay. Well-defined non-trivial ring depending on the stratification. So I want to construct this up. So well defined means that it doesn't depend on the Exactly. That's exactly what it means. And we wanted to coincide with key on compact spaces. So we wanted to give something that we want. The, uh, so this will be done and the application that we want. Okay. So But if, if I go too fast, let me know why. Okay, I'll just see. Uh, so um, the construction is called the growth and the construction, many of you are be familiar with. So you take the category L of all subspaces that are stratifiable by locally compact. Okay, so it's category into continuous maps. Um, I don't really care about maps. Um, so X is in L, it, it's the junction of subspaces. This is one of them. Okay, so once you have a category, uh, small means that 
the morphism for the set. So you can look at the set of isomorphism classes of objects. So the actual isomorphism is not so good. Let's see. Um, uh, so, uh, so I'm looking at spaces that are stratifiable by local complexity. You take X and you cut it into strata. Um, this turns out to be something you know. Um, so if you take something called constructible sets, a set union of local closed subspaces, they could overlap them. Constructible set is that is defined over them. Um, then you show that. The spaces are defined, which are the locally stratified, locally compact stratified sets, are the same as the constructible sets. And the, the, the proof of this is uh, just to show you that this kind of expressions is kind of pretty annoying, but very important in the proof of the main thing. The proof is not important. But uh, you have to do this sort of uh, theoretic uh, juggling to show that uh, something is constructible. If it's locally uh, stratified or locally compact sets. Okay, so I have this collection of locally of spaces that are stratifiable by local compact sets, or this collection of constructible sets, and I can get the uh, defined exponent. Um, so the growth and decreasing is a formal definition. Um, which is defined to be the community brain generated by the isomorphism of objects. Okay. Here, the isomorphism are homing morphic, right? Homomorphisms, subject to these relations. All right. So, um, so here, x minus y is in the space if y is in the subspace of x, the Boolean algebra, right? Uh, and so you want that. You want the relations in this, so you're modding out by the fact that generated by this minus that minus that. That's what it is. But other way, other words, you have this community being generated by this and subject to these two groups. So this gives you a product, and it is okay. I've seen this before, it's a wonderful little construction. Okay, so we have a ring, and the thing seems to be great, right? I mean. I have now a ring uh, of, of, of strata. I can add strata, subtract strata, and multiply strata. That was a point. Okay, but this ring is zero. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we wrote 10 pages before we rewrite it. <laughs> okay, so uh, there are too many spaces. Uh, th 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 there are spaces that are homomorphic to themselves minus a point. So, uh, so in the ring where one equals zero, there's only one. Ring. So we have to do something else. And doing that something else is really, I think, the beauty of this. So, uh, okay, you, you get around this is to uh, consider finite type spaces. So definitely, this is what you want to do. If you want to make sense of you know, the, the bracket, which is called the multiple morphism. So the bracket, which is the sum of the PC of XI. So the PC of XI should be defined. So definitely you want to be looking at the finite type space. So what's a finite type space? Finite type space is a space um, which uh, uh, cohomology of, of whose cohomology with compact support is vanished beyond a certain degree and finite to um, There's a lot of beautiful work done in the 60s and 70s. We had, we had to find out about you know, when this is happening and how. The some sales. So I'll skip that. I'll just show you that uh, you discover some interesting things. Um, so the, the first condition, uh, Virti, I think, uh, it is shows that if, if you take a space, what we want anyway, locally homomorphic to an open subspace of genetic social complex, then uh, this first condition holds. Um, and for compact uh, X, if the first condition holds, the second holds by Hilma Wilder. And you have pathological spaces, uh, pretty quick. Interesting, you, you have a compact, you have compact, so locally compact subspace, you have a three. So that out Miller, I don't know if you remember that, uh, so um, which has cohomology uh, non vanishing in many. 
the analog of the polar circle, or the, right, the polar circle is that when you have very circles at one point, and this is you take a, this was a question of uh, Steenra at asked Nonner when he was a student. And I think Barat and Nonner seem to be of the same age or same uh, generation. And they were both students and they worked it out. So I think uh, Steenra asked them, okay, instead of taking a bunch of circles, getting smaller and smaller, uh, is that the polar circle? No, I had the name, I forgot. Hawaiian, yeah, Hawaiian makes that. So then you take the spheres. You take spheres doing the same thing. And then they realize that singular, singular cohomology would not vanish. So this sort of spaces that has to avoid that. Okay. Uh, so let M be the subcategory of all subspaces. It can be locally compact, uh, stratified by locally compact subject. But I ask also the finite parameter, so SCFT. Now they are all SCFT. Uh, is it any better? Well, not so. So I mean, the complementation is is not always there. Okay. So uh, I want to introduce something called uh, we call ego connections. Um, so the idea is very simple. I already mentioned it in this guys. Uh, I want to take a space. I want to take a space and uh, decompose it, stratify, decompose it into subspaces. And those subspaces have some properties, into compact, into finite type, things like that. So I want to make sense of that. It's called a Lego, uh, like a Lego game. Uh, so a Lego collection is any subcollection of U, which is made out of space. And the stratification on it. So, um, so again, these spaces are stratifiable, not stratified. And uh, we had to deal with this. It's not even clear we get the optimal language. But uh, I'm not giving a particular stratification when I give you space. I'm going to say X has such a stratification. We call it stratifiable. And of course, if you have a space which has a certain certification, if you remove the strata, the new space is still in your category. And if you take a product of strata, you get a product of spaces that still is in your category. So, uh, for your collection. Okay, so that's the game. Um, okay, so it is, uh, okay, what's the point? Try to avoid writing uh, lots of uh, symbols. Uh, a Lego collection is a family of spaces that can be composed into local compact strata. That's always something that I need that might have additional properties. So here's are some examples. Uh, you'll be um, you'll find many examples. You know, and some that came up in the previous talks. So the LCFT stratified spaces, but I threw in finite type on the strata. Self stratifiable spaces, CW complexes, some partial complexes. The strata are the simple seeds. Um, so these form a Lego category. Uh, but the complement of two cells is not necessarily a cell. All right. Uh, th there is a category of self stratifiable spaces such that the complement of two spaces is again in that space. And I discovered that to be Omen-Moss structures, which you have mentioned earlier, like semi-algebraic sets. So the Omen-Moss structures turned out to be a special case of a Lego category. So what they are, they are this construction without throwing in all the compatibilities and conditions. Uh, you know, you, you start an R and build up your uh, family of spaces uh, in Rn for any N to projections and meanings and, and complex. And the main theory, is, uh, the main theorem of the theory is what's called the cell decomposition theorem, which states that any definable sentence, any set in this family can be partitioned into cells. This was very, it's very useful. And it's a Boolean algebra. Uh -huh. One, then three, three, one, one, then three. Ah, uh, three. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. That should not, that should be. So there, so there are these Lego categories where you can assemble things by string. Okay. 
Now, I changed a little bit my definition of logarithmic uh, degree by saying that if I have a Lego category, so I, I have stratifiable spaces, um, I have this property every time I remove a strap. Not, not if I have y into x, I don't maybe necessarily have this property because I don't know if x minus y is in my space. But if I have y a strata model, if I remove it, I'm left with a strata. So, uh, so I, I changed a little bit my definition of, a, of, a, of k0 and I get this. this uh, so if you have a spaces stratified by cells, this k0 is uh, z, right? Just because you start with r, I mean, this is a strict uh, people in algebraic geometry love to do, uh, but it has this consequence. So if, for example, you start with r and you know, and you see that the class of r is minus which is, of course, exactly the early characteristic of compositions. So uh, you write R as negative zero, the positives, you write it this way, you write R is minus one, and R to the n is, of course, because it's a ring, it's minus one to the power n, and so everything is generated by class of one. Okay, so something not zero. <laughs> okay. Um, now, to get back to the question, yeah, probably that's where you mean. But your question about when is this thing well defined? So what we don't have now bracket. Yeah. Uh, we don't have uh, okay. Brackets are like this. That's with a big ring, right? Uh, but I don't have brace, right? Okay. But that's the class I want to define. It turns out that it's not going to be defined on the. Uh, Cells, uh, it's going to be defined on something like this. Uh, so, this is the last thing I introduced, the last Lego category I introduced. This is my Lego category, which is M, we called it. So, these are all subspaces in M, they're locally compact, uh, yes, and stratified. And now, what I want is that the unit of the closures of the strata are finite. Okay. Um, to make things work, this is a small thing we have, uh, but it's not much. Uh, sorry, this is cohomological finite. That's what it is. Which is finite type for cohomological compact. So not only the xi's are of finite type, but also, also the closures. Mm -hmm. So if you, uh, in all, for all applications, this is very easy to have. It's not a big deal, but on this, on this Lego category, um, okay, so he, here's, here's the organic graph. So we started with all locally compact the stratified ones, then all locally compact finite type ones, then the ones that are stratified by cells. Then uh, you have the, uh, what are those? Uh, uh, minimal structures. And this is the one I'm now looking at. And on this, you have this result. Okay, so we do have a beautiful morphism, non trivial, uh, well defined, and non trivial morphism into Z. We did define a motivic morphism from this category, from this growth and decay uh, to Z. And this is what I'm going to use in application. Okay. Okay, any questions? The question is that you gave an example which is the four minimal structure. Right. But could you bring another example that it is not for minimal that satisfies your level? Uh, well, I, I, I just gave all the small. <coughs> oh, oh. I mean, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, the, I gave many that are not even for minimal. Uh, no, but uh, so that you, you need it to be for No, 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 I don't. I don't need to be bullied. This is why I changed my definition of K0. K0, I said, you take X with the stratification, then X minus the stratum is the sum of that. So it has to be stratum, it's okay, but not arbitrarily in any substance. So um, getting around this problem. Okay. 
So uh, the applications. Um, I mean, what I'm trying to illustrate is that transformative will give you such an easy way to compute things. Uh, we have various applications we're going to give you feel for. Um, and um, you see how easy you can work with this. Uh, even computing key, not just key C, but even, even other characteristics. Right, so the configuration space that showed up, we work with them. Um, very well known, obviously, is the formula that I've shown here. Um, that if you take the configuration space on any X, then this growth and class uh, is this product. And generally, this is done using Fadel Lurvig kind of business. We don't even talk about vibrations here. You just write a, a, a two line stratification. You just stratify your space this way and you sum. It's really literally four lines. Uh, so it, you, you, I just included two proofs just to show you that how things go very easy if you choose the right stratification for your computer. Uh, so you, you take this by subspace where x0 is xi for some i, and then you write this to be this. You should think about it carefully. This is not right. And then you apply your uh, bracket. And this decomposition uh, was suggested by Arabia Alberto. Um, I'm not asking you to follow the details, but just tell me that it's a pretty long proof. But this, this here, uh, beautifully you'll see it came up with a chromatic polynomial. So something very nice, something very good. Right. So, um, then if you take the um, order rules, you get that because you divide by n factorial and you, you prove that everything works well for bundles and for uh, coverings. Okay, so you get those two classes. Uh, you get the you get the other uh, you get the other characteristics this way, and, and that's the proof. That's it. So how do you get key from the growth entity class? you apply your motivic morphism because it's well defined. Okay? So you apply your motivic morphism, it's morphism into Z. So you replace um, uh, the previous formula. You replace bracket by this uh, brace, right? So you have this, but now we have to know that when X is the manifold, X is this guy, is minus one to the other. So when X is the manifold, this is a manifold. So this is minus one to that power, and x is minus one to that power. And that's it. your base here, and here you get this one. Just two lines. Uh, you get this, which is not published anywhere. I was surprised. I worked on the subset space in the long a while ago. Um, so, um, and it's it's two lines. Right. So you take the subset space. It's different than the symmetric part. So, so sub n of x is a space of all subsets finite subsets of x cardinal and less or equal to n. The space that shows up, people working on this age when the algebra is moving uh, a few other people. Um, so if, if you want to uh, compute, uh, well, here's, here's a kind of formula. Why? Because if you take the subsets of cardinality n or less, or cardinality n and minus union, uh, union configuration space, and you sum. As simple as that. And in literature, they have a full bouquet of circles, but they don't have a formula. Generally, it's just, uh, the symmetric product, I want to just say, okay, McDonald's formula is also a, another two line proof, but maybe more general. And people probably know the McDonald's formula which is a symmetric product. Okay, so this is all classical. Um, um, less classical is maybe graph configuration space. I want to talk about this. And also about orbit configuration spaces related to the work of time. So um, I don't know if you've seen this construction, which I really like. Uh, which is the configuration space, uh, like a graph configuration space. So what is that? If you have a, a graph, so you have a certain number of vertices and certain number of edges, you take the tuples of x1 up to x n and the number of vertices, as many entries as vertices, and you say xi is not equal to xj if i is an edge. So for example, if uh, your space is, if the graph completely got the configuration space. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, let <laughs> okay. Uh, let a k uh, gamma be the number of colonies of gamma that k comes. So, um, so you know what a colony of a gamma is. For the color of every vertices and, and two vertices that are related by that. Uh, then the uh, then when you see the chromatic polynomials like this, when you see it like this, immediately you think it should be related uh, to. Uh, uh, the configuration space. Uh, so we had this proof, we we're not aware it was already published of this theorem, but completely different proof. And if you are, so that the configure that the uh, Rothendieck class of the configuration space is a chromatic polynomial uh, where, where the variable is. It, it's, it's just you can say, uh, well, okay, I mean, what, what can you see? You see that you can stratify your space. Uh, you can stratify your space by configuration spaces. Exactly, the colors gives you which configuration spaces you use. Uh, this this is uh, uh, yeah. I mean, that this was, okay. and then you get the key from it, which I'm not aware of it published anywhere, but you get it also by applying your good even more physics immediately. Um, I just wanted to show you a proof, but I won't have time to because I want to show you the other example. But this is just you, you stratify by configuration spaces and you sum, you get exactly the chromatic phenomenon. Uh, ah, oh, I added this this morning. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. I, this is, uh, I, I just noticed that I was reading that as a graduate student, uh, Ruth Hall, who just won the field medal. I proved uh, two things that I uh, I knew, but I didn't know that he proved it, uh, which is that the chromatic polynomial is uh, unimodal and not concave. It's just uh, an interval. Sorry, it's the thrown in at the same. Um, it's one of the things he proved. So uh, this is the chromatic polynomial of this graph. Okay, it's cut. So sorry, oh, it's hexagon. And uh, and you see that. The efficient increase decrease, and that's going to be always the case. All right, and the last one is the orbit configuration spaces. Uh, I'm going to go through this quickly. And this is the one that came up um, also in the work done when you take and um, so if you have a finite group acting on space X, you take all points that lie in different orbits. Exactly what it is. It was defined by Miguel Pentaco, who was a student at Cole. And if the action is triggered, you recover configuration. And the other characteristic of this is not known, uh, as far as I know. And uh, all I wanted to do, not, I mean, I, the formula is at the end, but all I wanted to tell you is that if you have an interesting thing is that in order to compute these things, you want to come up with a stratification. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and it turns out that if you have any group like that space, it's going to give you an LCSP. Stratification for free is called the orbit type of stratification. Um, very, very useful stratification actually. Um, so uh, this this theorem, if, if G is finite group active with risable X space, then these spaces, the fixed points, and these XH, they have a name I forgot, uh, which which are all the X's which whose whose isotropy is conjugate to H, but these give you strata. Of your space. So a group action stratifies your space. That's exactly what you need in order to solve this problem. This, this is, uh, this is uh, for example, if you take S3 acting on the triangle, this, this, is, uh, this is the stratification you gives you. You take S3, a little group of yeah, and you work by some of them. So if you want to work this exercise. And uh, since I have to leave uh, this, is, but you get a formula because you can completely. Uh, if you get the uh, the class, but if you work with the manifold, you can replace this with minus one to some power um, to get the other characteristic. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Is that configuration space?
Yes. Okay. And taking all your characteristics, kind of one of the examples of one of type categorification. Now we know because it has the paper. And it is done in paper by Malanovsky and Sastanovich. Uh, I didn't know about this paper. I would love to see it. I know the paper by Hackett and uh, it's and this is solved by and Okay. Yes. It was just comment that this might this graph configuration is related to how Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so I think that this paper is quite good. Uh, I think I, uh, oh for for the uh, um, I always work with a finite group. I, yeah. I don't know if the proof goes through, but I think it's the only group would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, let's thank you again. Thank you.